welcome. Let's talk about urban planning. The Netherlands, which is facing some shrinking regions, so loss of populations in some regions, launched a national plan in 2009 to address this situation. And I have invited Marco Bontier to talk about this plan that actually ended in 2022 and to tell us more about why it stopped and what new approaches are emerging to fight the process of urban shrinking in the Netherlands. Rodrigo Silva, as always, let's talk about urban planning. Mark, welcome to our episode. Thank you. So, Mark, the shrinkage is well, it's a growing global phenomenon. Policymakers are struggling to accept it, to implement new approaches, and your study focuses on the Netherlands, apparently one of the few cases in which there was a clear strategy to fight the problem. So tell us more, tell us more about that and what drove this research. What is special about well, the case study that I studied in the Netherlands is that not just that there's a strategy to try to deal with this phenomenon of shrinkage, but that it was a national strategy in which the national government tried to collaborate with provincial, regional governments and local governments to develop an effective strategy to deal with, with shrinkage. So there's several other European countries where strategies to deal with shrinkage have been developed, but not so many that uh, developed that at the national level. And the main reason why I got interested in this specific focus was actually that what you already announced at the start of this conversation, that this, meanwhile, this strategy has ended. And I, I asked myself, why has it ended? And, and that's where my exploration of this topic started. Perfect. Let's follow up on that. So what are the main findings of this study? So I have tried to trace the emergence and development and, and the end of the strategy through time. And I was helped by that because already since more or less the start of that strategy, some years before that, I'm already involved in research in urban and regional shrinkage in the Netherlands and other European cities and countries. So I was actually there as a researcher when, when they started this strategy. I was also there when it ended. So I knew which, which documents I had to study, and it was also relatively easy to find out uh, which people would be the most uh, interesting uh, information sources for my interviews. So try to reconstruct with the interviews and the analysis policy documents how this uh, strategy came about and why it came about. And I mainly found that started actually the growing awareness of shrinkage as a structural problem, not only at that moment, but also for the next decades. It started at the local and regional level. So the first people that tried to make uh, national policymakers aware of the problem did that from the local and the regional level of shrinking cities and regions. But then also some national institutions became involved, like national policy advice institutions, for example. And then the ball started rolling, more or less. But then the, the big difference that actually led to uh, the strategy was made by a minister that in 2009 became the Minister of Interior Affairs in the Netherlands. And he made it his personal mission to pay more attention to shrinkage, also at the national level, and to develop a strategy based on a kind of solidarity principle between growing and shrinking parts of the country. And he managed to get the coalition together for that. And then this first action plan came, followed up by the second action plan about five or six years later. And then gradually this... This policy and the, the sense of urgency uh, for it faded away, actually, at, at all the, of governance. This was actually one of the things I didn't expect to find, that not only at the national level, the interest uh, faded away, but actually also at the level of the areas to, that were actually shrinking. And then towards the end of the article, I, I tried to answer the question why that happened. So partly it was because shrinkage was no longer seen as a very urgent issue, for example, because the population forecast has changed that there would be less shrinkage and in some parts uh, of the country maybe even more growth than expected some years before that. And partly it was also more for pragmatic reasons, like for example, the crisis that, that came in between not only in the Netherlands, but also internationally, which forced the government to, to make serious cutbacks on their spendings. And then this was one of the programs that, that suffered from that, amongst others, because much less people at the national government level could work on this specific program than at the start. Okay, perfect. So this program changes at the government level, this growing awareness, the solidarity between the shrinking parts of the country, the growing parts of the country. Let's look at like in practice, not probably ahead of the future now. 
how can this set of policies, these findings can help set more strategies for the future? So in practice, what can happen? What can happen is actually partly it has already started happening and not because of this article, but my article links uh, quite nicely to the ongoing debate in the Netherlands. Because already since last year, there's a lot of debate about what the future of regional policies more in general for the Netherlands should be. Not specifically about uh, growing and shrinking areas, but rather a regional policy that is one regional policy for all regions in the Netherlands and their interconnections. So this is at this moment still an ongoing discussion and we don't know yet which uh, concrete policies will get out of that. We are currently in a quite interesting political situation in the Netherlands. At the moment that this conversation is recorded, at the very day of this conversation, our new national government is installed. And probably they will have quite different policies and strategies in several fields of policy than the governments before. And one of the things maybe they would prioritize more than the governments before is to pay more attention to the regions lacking behind in their developments relatively in the Netherlands. So I would expect that they are very interested in prioritizing regional policies in which all regions of the Netherlands get a more or less equal role and equal attention. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they also have to make a lot of cutbacks on their spendings again, which could also go at the expense of the ambitions in these regions. So what we will actually see in the coming years is still quite open, but somewhere in the next months, uh, it should become more concrete. And maybe the findings of this uh, article could also be relevant for that. Mm -hmm. I'll follow up on this new national government in a bit, but before, so there is still a lot of uncertainty for the future. How do you think that future research can help? So what should you focus on to help on this? So of course, in my article, I could only focus on one case, the Netherlands. It wasn't possible to make an international comparison. It could be interesting to look at other countries, especially other countries in Europe that are facing more or less similar problems. but. In most cases, in most other countries, the contrast between growing and shrinking parts of the country are actually much more extreme. So maybe an international comparison in which we maybe would find some other countries that are trying to do something comparable to the Netherlands could be helpful. On the other hand, a limitation that I faced was I had to do this research all by myself in a limited amount of time. So if maybe there would either be more people or I would have more time, uh, maybe we could also go a bit more in depth to uh, really find uh, more in depth the reasons of why happened what happened. Because I still have the impression that, well, I, I did find some relevant findings, but it feels for me like only the start of a research that could have been much more in depth. So maybe either I in the coming years or maybe also some other research could uh, Think of a follow-up research in which you could follow up on, on these findings and see them as more an in-between step rather than the final conclusion. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You mentioned, uh, stepping a bit in the conversation, you mentioned the political situation with the new national government um, installed in the country. Uh, and you went to a point that I would like to ask you and use my privilege as a moderator. Uh, if you think that the rise of these new parties the PVV, for example, if these new parties can impact somehow the implementation of new strategies, if it fall, if it's going to be a priority or not for the future. So how can party politics interfere with this? And then after that, I would like for you to share your, your personal reflections, what struck you the most personally when you conducted your research. So when the Netherlands for, uh, not just for me, but I think for all of us, the big question mark is now to what extent the new coalition with Indeed, the PVV as the biggest party, which never happened before. But then also another populist party like the BBB, the Farmers Civilians Movement officially, but actually mostly the Farmers Party, in my perception. They made a lot of promises in their election programs and now also in the rough outline of what has to become the coalition program of all the things they want to change. So they made a lot of promises which uh, drew a lot of votes. And apparently, I also saw in the news that this raised the trust in national government under, especially on the certain groups that so far had the least trust in government, especially the, the lower income groups that really think that now that we have voted for these parties, they understand us much better than the parties that were in the coalition before. And now finally, we will see a policy that is uh, in our interest much more than before. So the big question mark is whether they can actually realize government program that actually is more in the interest of these groups that so far felt a bit left behind. 
Personally, I'm afraid that uh, they will disappoint these people uh, a lot and that a lot of the drinks that uh, they want probably are simply impossible to, uh, to realize. And so linked to that, there's also a big question about how stable this coalition will be because next to these two more populist parties, there's also two parties that actually are more, let's say, mainstream connected to the, the coalitions that we had before and the kind of policies we had before in the Netherlands. So the balance between those two already in the negotiations was there were a lot of problems with that, a lot of tensions. So it remains to be seen uh, how long this coalition will, will actually last. Yes. And so if you had to, in, this was very straight to the point episode, but if you had to, in two sentences, to summarize the whole conversation for people to remember, what would it be, these two sentences? So I hope that this, this concept of that we didn't discuss in the conversation before, but is discussed in the article quite centrally, multi-scalar governance. So somewhere in the article, I, I give the message that Swingage is a multi-scalar problem or phenomenon, and it requires multi-scalar governance. So I hope that's a message that people take from the article and maybe then now also from this conversation. And maybe then in future research, we can think about what that actually means for how to make an effective strategy to deal with it. A situation like Swinkids on the regional level, but also with these, in many countries, growing differences between growing, flourishing, wealthy, and shrinking, stagnating, lagging behind parts of the country. Perfect. Mark, thank you very much. You're welcome. This podcast is powered by Cogitatio Press. You can listen to this episode on the Let's Talk About Urban Planning website on Cogitatio Press YouTube channel and whatever you get your podcast.